Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Continental Club. Today on live, we're going to be talking about upgrading your junior program to the full program. I'm going to show you some options that you may be interested in in the software. So let me turn the camera on and say a proper hello. I've got to change one thing here. Here we go. All right, everyone. So welcome to the Continental Club. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Genome America. And as I said, today I wanted to talk to you about upgrading your junior program to the full program. Some of you may not know what options are in the, in the full program that you don't have in your junior program. And before I do that, I want to mention, so I don't forget, is right now the USA, Canada, and the UK is having a free trial of the full program. And as a junior user, you can take part of that as well. It's very easy. You apply, they send you some codes. And then when you get those codes, you don't have to reinstall the software. It's very easy. Make sure your software is closed. Go to your software key and show or find it so you actually see the window and click log out. Once you've logged out, put those new codes in the two spots, serial and activation, and then hit activate. Activate will illuminate at that point. Hit activate. Now you can close that window, launch your software, and you will have the full program to use for the month of April. At the end of the month, you can decide if that's what you want to do is move up to the full program or not. You have a chance to play with it. And while we're at it, whether you do the trial or not, I do recommend that you join us over on the Genomi Artistic Digitizer Facebook page. It's the one with the blue banner. We have lots of tutorials, uh, worksheets, lots of help and inspiration there. So you can post your questions there. Uh, we're happy to help you with anything that you need over there too, as, and here as well. All right, so let me show you a couple samples of things that are not in your junior program, but you might be interested in in the full program. And one of those is the ability to use a knife feature. The knife, what it does is it will uh, you know, draw a line across, and that's the other thing you don't have is the digitize tool. And you create where you want your cuts and you can separate uh, things like letters or items, or you can cut them and cut them apart so you have less things there. So that's one thing you can do with it. You can also use it with this feature. This is the uh, paint stitch. And so I took a picture of the back of my pillow and then I went ahead and um, created the paint stitch from there. Once there, I created my heart and used the knife feature to cut away all the extra parts of the design I did not want and leave it in the shape of a heart. So I really love the knife feature. I use it for a lot of different things. Another option is the um, floral fill or array fill. So you can use the uh, create floral to fill your letters, or you can use what's called array fill and pick your own design to fill your letters, whether you use the vine in create floral or just your little things. I think a week ago, we posted a video on our main page from our developer on creating an Easter egg. You use the knife feature to cut it apart, and in each section, you added these little designs using array fill to fill it all in. So you get the array fill, create floral, and the other array where you use circular or rectangular. So I'm gonna show you a few of those things in our software today, and then we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and I'll put on the software. I have to change our camera angle here to Oops, to this, not that one, this one here. There we go. All right, so when you open your software, it is the same whether you're in junior or full, all right? Both of them are updatable. So we just had a minor update the other day. Um, so it'll look the same here. So let me go in. I wanna show you on the work page some things that are different. You can see over here so many more tools than what we had before. So what you can do is right here, we have, you have edit stitches, but they have, we have edit nodes and I'll show you edit nodes. I love edit nodes. This is where you change, you can adjust the shape of your, of your uh, things you're working with. So I find it very handy. Um, these you have zoom measure stitch flow. This you don't have, this is the digitize outline shape tool. And there's different uh, options within this tool 
this is your drawing tool. So I can click on here and make my own little shapes if I want to. And I could do them as a line or if I wanted to, my tool is still active since it's blue. I, I can actually, you know, create my own little heart shape. Let me go back here. I really want there. One of those kind of, there we go. And then I can come in here and change this node. This one, I think I want a line, a cusp node. There we go. So we have a, a kind of a point in there. So my heart will look a little better. So I can adjust these to get my shape however I want it. So that's what edit nodes gives you. Edit stitches, and I'm going to do edit stitches. You need to turn on your auto to manual optimize and then have your piece selected and select edit stitches, zoom in close. Let's, let's click off and then click back on. Sometimes it takes a moment for it to pop on for me. Let's see here, come off unless they're in there sometimes let's see if i go to optimize let's just do optimize and see if it'll bring it on let's click off of my piece let's select it it's like there we go now we have it so in here you can see and i've cut away some things by accident you can see your needle points and in junior you have this so i can move these like this and adjust my uh, shape that I have, or not really the shape, it's adjust your stitches actually. So you have the option of doing this. And let's see what that looks like. So you can see I've made a little bit of a hole in there. So that just adjusts your stitches where nodes adjust the shape. I find nodes very, very handy. So let me delete that to get it out of our way. And we'll take that out and we'll take this out of the way as well. All right. So you have a shapes tool in the full program. Now in junior, you, yes, you can get shapes in other places and bring them in, but they're, uh, it's, I find it easier to you know, create a shape in here, such as like rectangle. I can come in here and I could make the roundness so the corners can be round, like that, rounded. I find that very handy. I use it a lot when I'm doing uh, in the uh, hoop zipper pouches and so forth. And of course we've been designing zip, zipper pouches and we do need the outline shape tool to draw lines of stitching to get our zippers in and so forth. Now you have the same text tool, but you don't have this tool here. This is rectangular array. And I'm gonna show you that. I'm just gonna make my square a little smaller. Rectangular array, up here you can choose your uh, horizontal and vertical copies right here and there we go. And then you can drag them so they come apart or if they're closer together, whichever you like, you can adjust them, you can angle them, all of that. So if you need something in rows, which I find handy, I use it for when I'm doing my in the hoop quilting, I sometimes create my quilt layout so I can see what it looks like. The other one that's in here, so I'm going to do select new and show you circular. Let's select our piece. And I'm gonna zoom back here so you can see what's going on. It set it in the center. And I have options over here. I could do a preset for a full circle. I can move my pieces around so they look like this. I could bring them in. And I could do that with many different options and I could apply it. And so now I have an array. So this is the array tool on this size. I'll show you the array fill over in properties in just a moment. You have the same color manager. Uh, the machine hoop icon is the same. Guidelines is the same. And your little window here is the same. Across the top, we have an extra option. We have techniques up here. Techniques gives you the ability to use your digital cutter to make cut files. You can make stencils to send to your uh, digital cutter. Crystals, you can do the crystal overlays uh, and send the crystal uh, mat to your cutter. And then of course you can put markers and uh, pens in your cutter and use the paint feature. So those are all options. And when you turn them on, I'll turn on this, you will see them in the 
properties. So when I open the properties, we'll see that. A couple others that don't show up here is there's an align tool and there's a shapes tool. So if I put this up here and I select, let's see if I can select both of these. I have my shaping tool. I have my align tool. I have a resize tool. So I have more tools here. And under convert, I have more tools where you have um, ambiance quilting and I think you have convert to curves under there. Those are the only two. I have auto border, so I can add borders. I can convert things to red work. I have these other options as well. So with the full program, you do get a lot more of the features and ability to use the software to its full potential. And there's so many tools, it's hard to show all of them at once. But look over here, as I said, I turned on the, the uh, cut feature, so it's right here. These other ones are always, always there. Under, um, well, you guys don't have the array fill. So this is the array fill. And that works this way. If I, let's bring in a little shape. I'm going to go up here. If you go to your tools, you will see you don't, you do not have clip art library. Clip art library gives you these extra graphics in here. So I'm going to pick this little starfish here. Maybe, there we go. Let me find one I really like. Let's see here. Scroll through. There's a lot. Of, here's a little butterfly. We'll take that butterfly. I'll insert it. I'm going to put it right over here next to my piece. I'm going to select both of these. And in my properties, I can select array. And it fills it in. Now, it fills the outside portion of it because I did outline array, so let's undo. If I select fill, I can do array for the fill. And then I have different options here, whether I want it to be a contour, or if I want it to be circular. And then I have options here to change my spacing between my pieces. So there's, a, there's more items that you get when you upgrade to your full program. So let me show you the knife tool because I really love the knife tool. So I'm going to uh, delete these here and show you our knife tool. All right, so let's go get something here. And I'm going to bring in, I think I'll bring in this. This isn't, uh, this is already a draw file. Let's see what happens when I bring it in. It was an SVG. And it's a pin, a safety pin. And I want to open it up right here. So I can take my digitized outline shape tool and I can make a line right across here. It's got to go across my piece. I'm going to right click and shape. I'll select that line and my piece. I'll click right click. And here's more options in right click, including um, shaping, which gives you weld and trim. I'll show you that. And right here is knife. So let's select knife. And it's made a little opening right here. Let's see, let's select my piece again. There we go. And if I select edit nodes, I can come in here and let's see where that node is. There we go. These nodes are part of that. And this one is part of this. So now I have a little opening in there. If I want to, let's make it a little bit further down like this. There we go. So if I want to make that whoops, look like a point, I can bring this one down more like this and straighten up my arrows. And there's the pointy end of my pin. So let's take a look at that. So now I have that. These parts here where my... Uh, it's not quite circular there. I can go ahead and delete these ones here to bring it back to circular. Now, these are your um, nodes for changing your shape. And this is something you don't have in your junior. You have edit stitches and edit stitches will work with the actual stitch, uh, the threads in here. 
So let's go up here and put this into optimize. And then I'm going to select edit stitches and I'm going to zoom in, especially down here so you can see. These are all your needle points, all your stitches. So I could pull these out like this. I can actually select a whole bunch and oops, and move them. You could do this in junior like that. And this is what it does. It moves those threads. Where if I'm using my edit nodes, you saw how that worked. If I want to make this skinny whoops, skinnier, let's see. Let's kind of select it this way. I have these selected. I can push in like this and make this part of it skinnier. There we go, we'll take that away. We don't need that today. And it could change the, uh, now let's see, why did it not change that? Because I, oh, it's not regenerating the stitches because I have this little mess here. So let me undo that little mess. There we go. And I should be able to, there we go, adjust my stitches. So there you, so you can do a lot with your edit nodes. And I really like having that ability to uh, edit my nodes. Now, the other thing, this is a big thing, I think, when you're converting um, designs, like this design here is a pretty simple convert. We would think it's a black and white, so I'm gonna double click on it. And you would have auto digitize, so I would select that. And I'm gonna do okay. And it comes into this window, same as what you have. And did you notice there were other options back there? We're gonna change our accurate, I'll keep it there. And our color limit is two for this one. And then I'm gonna hit trace. And it's going to be on my workspace now. And a lot of times you want to remove um, the outer part and maybe these inner parts. So I can, you can definitely do this in junior. There you go. So now you have that separated. But if you want to remove this and you delete, it leaves, it brings the under layer in. So that's the, the layer that's underneath your, the white section of that. Now I could select the white part and my black part, right click, and I have a new tool right here, plus it's on my top toolbar called shaping. And if I click on trim, what it does is it cuts through uh, the black and we'll leave a hole there so I can delete this. This is great for when you bring in a, a letter that you've maybe you've purchased letters or whatever and you bring them in and they're embroidery files and they have an open they need an opening in the in the B or the D or the O. You can select the letter and the inside and right click shaping trim and then delete that inner part. That's how that works. This is a really, really handy tool. Um, it's one of those things that I don't think I could do without. It's I just really, really love it. Um, I talked about paint stitch. So let me show you what paint stitch looks like. We'll use this JPEG here. So here's your options. Um, you have in junior, just uh, backdrop and auto digitize. And then down here, we have the extras. So I'm going to do paint stitch. I'm going to crop out. I just want some of this. I don't need all of it. So let's just take some of it away. And I'm going to do OK. And it'll bring it right into here. And there we go. It's turned it into a thread work of art. This is a great piece. Um, I might want to cut it into a shape using my uh, digitize outline shape tool and the knife. So let's say I wanted to do something artsy like this. I want to put a line across there like that and shape. Let's do one over here and, and shape. Then I can select that and my back piece. Right click. Oops, let's wait a minute. Let's get all of that and right click. Oh, I know why it won't change. Sorry. You have to save this. Let me get rid of these. I forgot. You need to save this as a Jeff and then bring it back in. So I'm going to come up here to file, save as, and I'm going to save it to my uh here to Anne's class so we can find it and i'm going to call it uh mix up there we go and save as a jeff change this to a jeff there we go save all right now i can go to my browser and there it is here mix up jeff 
when I click on it, it comes in. I know it's a Jeff because over here it says raw. And I could delete or select colors and change colors individually here. If I delete like this white part, sometimes it doesn't delete everything. But this is where you could use your knife tool. So I'm going to slice this and I'll show you what happened. When I slice this like that and shape and shape, and I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to right click knife. I'll need to right click again because this one is still showing knife. There we go. And I can, I think I can come in here and select. I can try and select right in here. Oops, if I could just keep my mouse moving, that would be handy. Okay, there we go. And I can select these sections. I think the line is right there. Let's get the whole piece. And then I would have these sections to, well, if I selected it, I could, let me see. Maybe it didn't knife, oh, I don't think it did the knife up here. See, that's all one piece. Sometimes you have to go through and use your knife feature again. But you can slice things up like this, and then I could use this in an artsy way if I wanted to. So that's what I wanted to show you on for our paint stitch and using the knife feature. I think that's a really uh, important feature to have, and it's a fun feature. The other thing, um, well, two things. One, one thing up here I showed you. You have insert symbol, which is which is great, but we have a clip art library. And in the clip art library are all these designs that you can use for many different things. And I'm gonna come down here and pick one of these, maybe uh, this or this butterfly, and I'm gonna insert it here, click and drag. I think I'll go back up and get one more. Hang on, clip art library, insert clip art. I'm gonna go down this way. Let's see what else I can get. And these are all click and drag. So I can just click and drag like that. Let's do one more. And I'll show you how the array fill works. This is really a fun tool to work with. So let me go in there. And while I'm at it, let me just remind you, if you have questions, please post them in the comments. I will be back after the live to answer any question that you have. Let's use this ladybug and put that in here. There we go. So there are my designs. And I'm going to create a shape. So let's create uh, this kind of a shape here. And I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to come over here to my properties under fill, I have array, and I'm going to select all of this. And then my array and it fills those designs in there, but I can change the spacing to make them more or less. Let's see. And let's go to circular. There we go. So we have more in there. And if we do, there we go. If we change the steps, we get a few more in there. Let's change our spacing. There we go, make them closer together. We can change the rotation of them. So now I can fill, I have my little piece I can fill in. So this is a really fun tool to work with. It gives you a lot of options. You could fill letters in like that. You could use the other um, array fill, which is the create floral. And I'll show you that with a round shape down here. Let me change that to green there. If I want to add a um, create floral to this, I can right click on it and come up here to array create floral and it gives me my options of what flowers i want to pick and what leaves i want to pick and okay and it will put a floral vine in there for me go up here like that there we go and over in my controls i can change my flower scale maybe i want my flowers bigger like that i can change how many of the vines i have 
levels. Let's see. Let's make bubbles too. Like that. There, it changed it. I only get one flower like that. Let's put this at 200 to give me. There we go. I have. Oops, did I put it? Oh, no, I put it at 10. I need to go 200. There we go. There we go. So we have a few flowers now. Oh, that's really pretty. I like that. So if I want to, I can use my stitch flow. Now you do have stitch flow in yours, but um, I can change where that vine is going to sit and I can pull it out like that. I can make it curve like this if I want. Like that. And I could, you know, make this any play around with that in my shape however I would like. So that's really fun. I, I like using that feature. There is a way to change these flowers to put your own um, graphic in there. I have a one with I do with a little bee, which I really like. And since we're talking about arrays, the other thing I want to talk about, I just want to check here. I think we look good. Um, I want to show you the rectangular and circular array. So I'm going to go to a new page. And here I will bring in a shape. Let me go get one of these, a clip art, because they're fun to use in these. And let me put here butterfly, since that seems it's springy. And I'll use this guy here, insert. And these are click and drag. I can always reshape them afterwards. I'm going to have that selected and then go to array and I'll do circular first. So here it is, it made a perfect circle because my preset is a full circle. And if I turn it off, um, I can change how many um, I have. So I have 13 in here. So let's make it five. And I can rotate these around by the clicking on them, turning them whichever way I want them to go. I can overlap them, bring them out like this. Maybe I want them to be this way, flying outwards. And once I have it where I want, or if I want another level, I can do a contour step. Let's do two. It gives me two more steps on there so that I have, let's undo, let's put my contour at one. There we go. So now I just have two of that adds one layer. So maybe that's what I want. And I have the option, you know, I could move these around as well on those lines. If I want them to be more like this, I could do that. So I have full control of that. Once I'm done, I can hit apply. And there my piece is all put together. That made kind of an interesting uh, look over here where the wings are kind of coming together and neat little border, I think. I could uh, delete these little uh, green parts if I wanted to. So that is the circular array. If I was going to use the rectangular, it's the same type of thing. Uh, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's do a little rectangle. This is the other thing when I made this rectangle, you'll notice, um, let me click off of it. It has curved edges. When you are in your shapes rectangle tool, we have roundness and you guys don't have shape in junior. So this is an, an added bonus. I have that selected. Let me turn off shapes and go to rectangular. Oops, let's select it first of all. There we go. I'm in rectangular and there are tools where I can add, you know, multiples by just clicking a tool. Uh, but up here I have control if I want to add uh, four horizontal copies and maybe I want five vertical copies. There we go. And I can move them up in my hoop. Let's put them up here like this and then drag this down to fill my whole hoop. I can rotate them, different ones. If I want to leave them like that, I could bring them back in like this. Maybe I didn't want the fills so I can delete the fill and it will, well, I think I have to do that at the end. Let's apply it. There we go. And so now I have these little windows all set up and I could select different ones. In my um, outline, I have patterns. Let's go under running, which we don't have in junior. So I can put different patterns on these windows. Let's see here. Let's get another one. Go down here. Find a fun one. This is kind of fun. 
and I'll scroll in so you can see. So you have decorative stitches with your full program. So there are a lot of things that you can work with in the full program, things that you don't normally, you don't have in your other program. Let me go back to my browser and look at some things here. If I can think, I showed you how to do this. That's really good. Um, you know, if I wanted to make, let's say this safety pin, I bring that in. I'm gonna turn on my techniques and I'm gonna turn on the cuts for my cutter so I can show you that. And let me just undo this. Let's see if it'll undo that. There we go. And I'm gonna select this now. And in my, let's see, techniques I oh, turned on. Let's turn that on, okay. And then when I go to my outline, I find I have the little scissor. I can select that. It gives me my cutter presets. So I can decide what I'm cutting. So whatever material I'm cutting. So maybe it's fabric with Terial Magic. And then I can come up here to file, export to cutter. And it's going to show me my cutter right here. I'm not connected. It's going to say not connected. Let's see if I can get it to open. Oh, let's do. I don't want to use direct. Let's just see if it Oh, let's go back to this one. Okay, there we go. So it's showing my cutter window, but I'm not connected to a cutter, which is fine. So this is the shape it would cut. And I have options down in here of things I can use with it. So I can send it right to my edge cutter right from here. So that's an option. That's something that's not in the junior program as well. Um, I'm trying to think. There are a lot of things. I think I tr tried to show you the highlights. I'm going to go back and look at my pictures because this will uh, remind. Oh, this is. Oh, you guys have patterns, so we don't need that. Uh, SVGs. So we can convert. Let's convert this JPEG. And I'll use the photo stitch with this. And it's. I think let's make it a little bit smaller like this, and I'm gonna try it with the DPI where it is now. It's a little high, we'll see what happens. There we go. So it turned it into a monochromatic uh, piece. When I select it, I can come over here and double check monochromatic or negative and have it, let's undo negative. I can change the stitch density here with it, the gamma correction, let's make it, go up. There we go. Um, so you can change it. And it's this just stitches. I'll show you in um, slow redraw. It's just going to see where it's stitching. We don't really need to go. You can see it stitches lines and it makes it thicker where the color where it's thicker. From here, if I wanted to turn it to a paint stitch, I have that control. I could make this black and white paint stitch. That's kind of an interesting piece. And uh, I probably, and I could select here and maybe I could change a color. I don't know if it will let me. No, it, cause it's still, it has to be a, um, a Jeff file to edit, edit some of that. You have some controls over here. Like if I want to change the color brand, I can come in here to Janome and it's changed to my Janome colors right there, which I kind of like it in the Janome colors. I like the way it's picked up there. So you have a, you have a lot more creative things to use in, uh, your full program. So I definitely recommend for you to try the full program for the month of April and see how you like it. I'm going to go back to the camera. Let me double check here that I've covered everything I want to check, wanted to show you. Oh, you know what I didn't show you is red work. So if I bring this in and I come up here, um, I'm going to go to, let's select it first. And it gives me convert. First, I'm going to convert it to curves. That will remove some of the extra uh, stitching that might interfere with a good uh, red work. We'll see. And then right here, I've convert to red work. Plus, I have knife in there now to use. I have these create outline from shapes. These are uh, things that you don't have in your junior. So convert to red work. So there's my red work design. Let me turn my grid off. Go to view grid 
and turn it off. There we go. So now I have this red work design. I can select and break apart and then remove and adjust parts of it as well. So that's something I use that a lot because, um, you know, it takes those embroidery designs that you have. You may have um, more designs that you want to turn into red work. I don't know if this one being an SVG, it comes in like that. If I select it, convert, let's see what red work will do. Oh, ooh, isn't that pretty? So you can experiment with things. If, if I didn't want the, um, I could do break apart here too. If I didn't want this circle, I could delete that now after I break apart. But that's really pretty. I do like that. Now it didn't, I think there were some little extra pieces maybe it didn't get, but you could go back and get those as well. So lots of possibilities, lots of creativity available to you. Let me go get the camera again so we can see what's going on. Here we go. And I can stand up. Here we go. All right. So I want to let you know, thank you for joining me today. Um, just a reminder, I said it at the top of the, um, our time. If you're interested in looking at the full program, go ahead and sign up for the free trial. Uh, so far, we have it in the UK the USA and Canada. So make sure you sign up for your country. And if you are a junior person, uh, make sure you can do it as well. You don't need to install the software again. You can just go ahead and close your software, open your open show your software key, log out, put in your new codes and activate. At the end of the month, uh, probably the day before, go ahead and close your full program, open show your software key put in your new your new numbers and so or act do log out and then put in your new numbers and do activate so you'll be all set with that you can do it afterwards too but if you want to do it if you're nervous do it the day before so you'll be all set um, if there's things that you've used in the full program save them uh, as a uh, jeff file so you can use them later um, I like to always save as a draw file first. That's my editable one. So I can go back and make edits. And then I also save as a Jeff. If you've never used the software before and you haven't loaded your junior or you don't want to, save it as a Jeff so you can use it in your machine at another time. All right, everyone, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining me today. It's been great. Remember, comments uh, below. I'll come back later and check on them. Bye for now, everyone.